Hi! In this video, we will discuss how to perform tests concerning means if the population standard deviation is unknown. We know from our previous lectures that if the population standard deviation is unknown and we want to estimate the population mean by hand, we have two options. The first option is to use the standard normal table if the sample size is greater than 30 or the random variable is assumed to be normal, or use the t-distribution if the sample size is 30 or below. Similarly, we may also use that rule if we want to perform test concerning means wherein the population standard deviation is unknown. To illustrate some examples, let's consider example 5.4. A certain printing press is known to turn out an average of 45 copies a minute. In an attempt to increase its output, an alteration is made to the machine. And then, in three short test runs, it turns out that the average is 47 copies a minute with a standard deviation of one copy per minute. Is this increase statistically significant at alpha is equal to 0 0.05? Or is it likely to be simply the result of chance variation? Note that the scenario does not assume that the random variable is normally distributed and the sample size is less than 30. Therefore, we will use the t-distribution table. To solve the problem, the first step is to identify the given. It is known that the printing press produces 45 copies per minute. This is our hypothetical population mean, denoted by mu sub o. Three runs were performed to test the claim, giving us the sample size which is n equal to 3. The test produced an average result of 47 copies per minute. This is our sample mean. And a sample standard deviation of 1 copy per minute. Then, the level of significance for this test is 0 0.05, which gives us a confidence level of 95%. Finally, since we are to use the t-distribution curve, we must compute the degrees of freedom, denoted by df, which is 3 minus 1, which is equal to 2. The next step is to formulate our hypothesis. Since we want to test whether there is a significant increase in the production, our alternative hypothesis is the population mean is greater than 45 copies per minute. Take note that our alternative hypothesis is a directional hypothesis, which entails a one-tail test. Moreover, our null hypothesis is that the population mean is equal to 45 copies per minute, which tells us that there is no significant difference in the population mean and the hypothetical value. Third step is to identify the critical value using the t-table. Earlier, I mentioned that our alternative hypothesis is a directional hypothesis. Directional hypotheses can either be greater than or less than, whereas non-directional hypothesis is stated using the not equal inequality. Directional hypotheses entail a one-tail test, whereas a non-directional hypothesis entails a two-tail test. Therefore, when looking at the t-table in this problem, we will use the one-tail column on the t-table, while the degrees of freedom is two. Therefore, when looking at the t-table in this problem, we will use the one-tail column on the t-table while the degrees of freedom is 2. Our alpha is 0 0.05 and our df is equal to 2 and their intersection is 2.9.20 which is our critical value. To illustrate the critical region, we will draw our t-distribution curve, which looks similar to our normal distribution curve. Then, we locate the critical region, which is on the right of our distribution, 
because our alternative hypothesis is greater than. This shaded region here corresponds to the critical region of our test. If the calculated t, which will be computed later, will lie on this region, then we will reject our null hypothesis and accept the alternative. Otherwise, we fail to reject our null hypothesis. The fourth step is to calculate the t using the formula sample mean minus the hypothetical population mean all over the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. We now substitute the values of each. The sample mean is 47. The hypothetical population mean is 45. The sample standard deviation is 1. And the sample size is 3. Using our calculator, we solve for the value of t. 47 minus 45, 1 divided by square root of 3, which is about 3.46. The calculated t is in the critical region, somewhere here, 3.46. Therefore, in step 5, where we make our conclusion, we reject HO, or the null hypothesis, and accept the alternative. This means that the alteration prints more copies than before on average. For our next example, let's consider example 5.5. The maceration of onions infected by the plant pathogen Sclerotium sepivorum is attributed to the synergistic action of oxalic acid and endopolygalacturonis. It is claimed that the oxalic acid content of infected onions after 16 days is not equal to 4.5 grams per dry weight of onion tissue. A sample of 4 onion bulbs contain an average of 3.3 grams per dry weight with standard deviation of 0.35 grams oxalic acid per dry weight of onion tissue. Is there sufficient evidence that the claim is true at 0.05 level of significance? Again, in this scenario, our sample size is less than 30 and we do not assume that the random variable is normally distributed. Our first step is to identify the given information. The hypothetical population mean is 4.5 grams per dry weight. Next, our sample size is 4. Our sample mean is 3.3 grams per dry weight. Our sample standard deviation is 0 0.35 grams per dry weight. And our alpha is equal to 0 0.05. Since we will use T distribution, we will calculate the degrees of freedom, which is equal to 4 minus 1 or 3. Next, we formulate our null and alternative hypothesis. Since our claim is the oxalic acid content of the infected onions after 16 days is not equal to 4.5 grams per dry weight of onion tissue, our alternative hypothesis is the population mean is not equal to 4.5 grams per dry weight. Whereas our null hypothesis is the population mean is equal to 4.5 grams per dry weight. Step 3 is to use the t-table. Since we have a non-directional alternative hypothesis, we will use the two tail columns of 0 0.05, specifically this one. Then, we find the intersection of these values 0 0.052 tails and the degrees of freedom which is equal to 3 
which is 3.1A2. This is our critical value. To illustrate the critical region, we draw a t-distribution curve. Since this is a non-directional hypothesis, we will consider both the right and the left tails of our distribution. Therefore, these shaded regions are the critical regions. Step 4 is to compute the calculated t using this formula. We substitute the values. So the sample mean is 3.3. The hypothetical population mean is 4.5. Our sample standard deviation is 0.35. And our sample size is 4. Then we use our calculator, 3.3 minus 4.5. 0.35 we divided by square root of 4, which is about negative 6.86. The calculated T is in our critical region, somewhere here. Let's approximate. Therefore, in step 5, our conclusion is to reject HO and accept HA. Which means that there is enough evidence to support the claim. For our last example, let's consider example 5.6. The average length of time for students to register for the first semester classes at a certain college has been 50 minutes. A new registration procedure using modern computing machines is being tried. If a random sample of 12 students had an average registration time of 42 minutes with a standard deviation of 11.9 minutes under the new system, Test the hypothesis that the population mean is now less than 50 minutes using a level of significance of 0.01. Still, the sample size is less than 30 and we do not assume that the random variable is normally distributed. So, we use t-table. First step is to identify the given which are the hypothetical population mean is 50 minutes. The sample size is 12. The sample mean is 42 minutes. The sample standard deviation is 11.9 minutes. Our alpha is 0 0.01, which gives us a 99% confidence level. And since we are to use t distribution, we will compute the value of our degrees of freedom, which is equal to 12 minus 1 or 11. Step 2 is to formulate our null and alternative hypothesis. Since we want to test if the population mean is less than 50 minutes, our alternative hypothesis is the population mean is less than 50 minutes. Whereas our null hypothesis is the population mean is equal to 50 minutes. Since we have a directional hypothesis, we will use the one tail column of 0 0.01. We find the intersection of our alpha and our degrees of freedom, which is 11, and that is 2.718. This is our critical value. To illustrate the critical region, we draw a t distribution curve and locate the critical value. Since we are considering a less than alternative hypothesis, the critical value is located at the left tail of our distribution. And in fact, a negative. Therefore, we have negative 2.718 as our critical value. And this is our critical region. Then, we compute the value of t using the formula sample mean minus the hypothetical population mean all over the sample standard deviation divided by square root of n. We substitute the values of each. For the sample mean, it's 42. For the hypothetical value, which is 50. Sample standard deviation is 11.9. And our sample size is 12. Using our calculator, we get the value of t, which is about negative 2.33.
Therefore, our calculated T is somewhere here, negative 2.33. Since our calculated T is not in the critical region, we conclude in step 5 that we do not have sufficient evidence to prove the claim. Or in other words, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. This means that we may assume that the difference in the average length time for students to register using the new procedure and the old procedure might be due to chance and is not a significant change. That's it for our video. I hope you learned something and have a good day.